Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I actually just got home. I'm filming this on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. I just drove in from the ranch. I'm trying to hurry and get this uploaded for Ian. He is our new editor, and he's been uh, editing these Arises for the last few episodes. Our former editor, he still edits a lot of Granger stuff. Paul is having a baby tonight. So we're super excited for he and Rachel and we cannot wait to meet her. So if you guys could say a little prayer for them tonight as they induce her, that would be amazing. And the next time you guys hear from us, they'll have their baby. So we'll probably talk about that on Tuesday on the Smiths. But for now, I will get started and go to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, thank you so much for this day, God. Thank you for the breath in our lungs, Lord. Thank you for just all of your blessings that you pour out over us each day, God, that we do not deserve, Lord. This was just a week and a day of being with family and giving thanks to you, giving thanks in all circumstances, for that is your will for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you so much for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you that you are the healer, you are the redeemer, you are the restorer, but most of all, you are life. You are the way, the truth, and the life, God. Please help us to see that. I pray that everyone here hears a word from you today, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I wanted to talk to you guys about one of my favorite stories in the Bible, and it is the woman at the well. I have done an Arise on this before, but I felt kind of the Spirit speaking to me in a different way about this, so I wanted to share the story with you if you haven't heard the story through the Bible, and then just kind of talk about what the Lord has been sharing with me about it. If you don't know the story, I'll read through, and this is um, in John, and it's first, I'm sorry, it's John 4. Verse one, verses one through 42, so it's pretty long, but I will kind of walk you guys through it. It says, now he had to go through Samaria. Now, Jesus didn't have to go through Samaria, but he had a divine appointment there. He didn't have to go through Samaria. It was, the, it was a longer way around. He could have gone a much shorter way to get to where he had to go. By the Lord, he had to go through Samaria, and you'll find out why. So he came into a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Sorry for the gunshots, guys. We live in the country, and somebody is having target practice, apparently. So it says, it was noon. So that means it was noon, it was in the heat of the day, it would have been really hot, the sun would have been right overhead, Jesus was tired, Jesus was thirsty, but he made his way through Samaria where he didn't have to go to have a divine appointment with somebody that was coming up. It says, uh, first let me say, Jesus was hot, Jesus was tired, Jesus was thirsty. Jesus knows our fleshly wants and fleshly needs. He was fully God and fully man. So in that moment, you can imagine being in the heat of the day, no shade, no, nothing to protect you, walking so far, he was hot, tired, and thirsty. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone down into the town to buy food. So many women back then would go to draw water when it was cooler, maybe in the morning or, or in the evening. They would go when it was cooler. But this woman was walking there in the middle of the day. She was by herself. Hey, Luna. She was by herself. She was all alone, and it was a, it was a weird time of day for her to go. It was also said that she had gone to a well which was further away. There was a well that was closer, but she had gone to the further one. There must have been something going on with this woman for her to be by herself to be there in the middle of the day, to be there at a well that was further away. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not dissociate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did all his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I don't get thirsty, and I have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. 
I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have five husbands and the man you have now is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, I love it. Jesus always says woman. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in the truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Up to now, there had just been witnesses. John the Baptist had said that, that he was the Messiah. His disciples um, knew, had, had seen his miracles, but this was the very first time that Jesus revealed himself with his own lips, that he himself was the Messiah. And he did it to a woman. He revealed himself to a woman, and not just a woman, an unclean, Samaritan, adulterous woman. <laughs> I love, I love that Jesus revealed himself to her in that way. I love that, first of all, I love that it was a woman. Second, I love that, that you know, the Bible says Jesus came for sinners. He didn't come for the righteous, he came to call sinners. And I love that he revealed himself to her in such a, a, a kind way. He revealed her sin to her by saying, you are correct when you say that he is not your husband because you have five husbands. Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you have said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man is really the savior of the world. I know that was long, but I just, I love that story so much. And there's so, so much to unpack from that story. I see this woman lonely, hurting, broken, feeling used, feeling lost, feeling sinful, feeling embarrassed, feeling shame and guilt. And I see her all alone by herself walking you know, just, just feeling so shameful and so alone. And I can see so many of us feeling shameful, alone, broken, and just wanting something, anything besides this life that we have now. And Jesus went out of his way to meet her in her mess. And Jesus does that with us. Jesus sees how we are so broken and hurting and lost. And he goes out of his way to find the one. And I was the one that one time he found me and changed my heart. I, I know a lot of you were lost and he has found you and changed your heart. He goes out of, out of his way to meet us in our mess. I was just about to say this world is thirsting for a drink as Luna is over here drinking a ton of water if y'all can hear her. This world is thirsting for a drink. This world is, is hungering for something to fill them up. I, you guys, so many of you message me and are sad and hurt and broken and alone and going through pain and you're, you're needing something. And, and so many of you ask me, how can I get close to God? What is it that I can do to get close to God? Start reading your word. Open your Bible, read your word, start on your knees, pray to God for Him to reveal Himself to you. Pray to God for Him to, to show Himself to you. Surrender yourself to Him and say, Lord, I am here. This is a complete side story. Sorry, I'm getting off track. But yesterday I went to River's Angel Spot and I just hit my knees and through my tears, I said, Lord, here I am, send me. Send me, God, I am yours. Everything that I have is yours. Everything that I have, send me into the world, whatever that looks like, I am here for your glory. Use me, shape me, mold me, and send me into the world for your glory, no matter what that looks like, no matter how uncomfortable that is, no matter how much pain I have to go through, use me. And that's a, that's a scary prayer. God will use you. If you surrender your life for Him, and He has called you to His eternal glory, He will use you in ways that might make you uncomfortable. But 
He will equip you with everything that you need to go into the world and make disciples. Some say she was the first evangelist. And because of Jesus meeting her in her mess, talking to her about her sin, and then her dropping her water jar, running back into her town and evangelizing, many, many more people were saved. Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. This is so symbolic of the free gift that God gives to us. We should be asking him, God, save me. Save me, give me your gift of eternal life. Give me, give me, tell me everything that I ever that I ever did. He knows everything that we've ever done and he offers that forgiveness. He offers to take that shame and that guilt away from you. All we have to do is hit our knees and say, God, I am asking you for this. Give this to me, Lord. Bless me with your spirit and your truth. I want your, your spirit to be inside of me. I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Meet me in my mess and give me a message to go into the world for your gospel. I love that she also leaves her, her water jar. I think so many of us can be looking for something to fill us up and give us what we need just in that moment. And that can be alcohol, that can be drugs, that can be work, that can be money, that can be something, that can be relationships, that can be something that you're just trying to use shopping <laughs> to fill you up in such a way, but you just still wind up empty and alone and broken and we're being called to, to the well, to the spring of living water of Jesus, not just a sip. When we go to Him, He fills us internally. He changes our hearts and He gives us that spring of life, that living water that can last forever and ever. And that's where we need to be. We don't need to be filling our, our, our minds and our bodies with temporary things of this world. We need to be filling it with the one eternal gift and that's Jesus Christ. John 7, 38 says, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. When we're saved, the gifts of God just keep, keep coming. Grace, forgiveness, justification, peace, hope, love, joy, all the fruits of the Spirit, eternal life, which is the greatest gift of all. He brought her sin to light. He knew all the things that she had ever done and he loved her anyway. He knows everything you've ever done and he loves you anyway. And he died for that sin. He became that sin for you to be forgiven, but he didn't die in vain. He didn't die for you. He didn't die for you to reject him. Jeremiah 17, 13 says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake, you will be put to shame. Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken the fountain of living water, even the Lord. John 7, 37 through 39 says, Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus is saying, come all who are thirsty, come all who are, who are weary and, and, and burdened, and I will give you rest. He is calling us to him. He wants us to, to come to him, to fall on our knees, to surrender, to ask. In verse 21, he says, woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Believe me, Jesus says, believe me, believe in me and you will have eternal life, believe in me. Isaiah 55, one through three, come all who are thirsty, come to the waters, all you who have no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the riches of fair. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. Lastly, Revelation 21, six and seven. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things and I will be his God and he will be my son. Are you thirsty? Are you tired? Are you guilt and shame ridden? Are you broken? Are you, are you hopeless? Come to the well, come to the living water, come to Jesus. Fall on your knees and surrender this week. Lord, I give my life to you. I profess you as Lord of my life and my savior, and I don't deserve it. Fill me with your living water, God. I need you, I need you.
and then watch all the miracles unfold. You are chosen. Go and read this story. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible, and I look forward to unpacking a lot of other stories with you guys. I pray you had a good Thanksgiving week and have a good week this week. We start Advent coming up. We start the best time of the year, the Christmas season, the birth of our Savior, and I'm so excited to talk to you guys about that in the coming weeks. Have a wonderful week. You're chosen. I'll see you next time. Go to the well of living water of Jesus Christ.